Uh, I think just a title for now. Okay. Uh, the building immediately to the left, uh, right next to the parking lot, is the Tennessee State University Agricultural Program Building. Uh, the first building to the right is the first Sufi conglomerate of business in the United States of America. Uh, they're just trying to make general businesses across the country. Um, the next building to the right after the Sufi uh, building is the South American Oil Consortium for the Exploration of North American Oil Assets. Um, the second building to the left is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints Bishop's Eastern Retreat and Conference Center. Um, and then the final building um, is the Conowa building. That's the Conowa campus. Uh, the, this face runs parallel to the near, e near edge of the parking lot at the far end of the spine, has a single glass door with a card scanner, uh, though it looks as though it may do more than that, even biometrics as necessary. Several high windows adorn a two foot high band around the square entrance at, at height near the top of the door. Uh, surely allowing light from outside in, but not allowing a view of the lobby beyond or anything farther than that. Two muscular guards stand to the left and right of that entrance, roughly 10 feet apart, watching all in their purview. They carry no apparent firearms, uh, each wearing a high-tech stun gun instead, though the looks on their faces seem to be uh, deterrent enough of any potential trouble that might otherwise be uh, brought to their doorstep. To the right of the door is a red K with a silver thick banded circle, a bonsai tree reaching behind and around various points of the K. Beneath that logo are the words Conowa Bio Biology Campus in six inch high letters with three inch high letters beneath those that say Centers for Disease Control Liaison Office. Okay. As you approach the entrance, the guard to your left steps forward and smiles, asking in a common American accent, what can Conowa Corporation help you with today? I asked to speak to the fire marshal on duty. Hello. Um, I, I kind of board and wave uh, my, my ID at them. Uh, sounding, uh, we are from the Tennessee Safety uh, Department of Public Safety, and we're here to do the uh, fire inspection, the annual fire inspection, and uh, the annual unannounced fire safety drill. Okay. Uh, the uh, okay. Th let me see if I can frame this correctly. The uh, the guard has a very high and tight haircut. Okay. Um, number three, all around, and he's a blonde. Does not have glasses, but he's got a very powerful face, very muscular body, uh, and he's about six foot one, six foot two. He says, "Yes, I've have seen you working in the other buildings for the last two or three hours, uh, uh, chasing everybody out with fire alarms. Uh, are you sure we're due for this inspection, uh, unannounced or not?" It's a requirement from the state of Tennessee. Um... It, it, unannounced means we don't give any prior warning because we want to make sure that uh, buildings are up to code. We understand this is a new building, so it should be all right. Okay. Um, who's your fire marshal? Can we can we come in? Okay, hang on a second. Peaches, roll your persuasion with a difficulty of eight. Guys, mm -hmm. we should can get I the pretty else to like be doing this. <laughs> What what's that, Chris? What are you doing? This? What do you mean? <laughs> I was it's like, is there some sort of like help action I could do? To... Uh, no, not really. Uh, because uh, Ginger was doing all the speaking. Um, you guys have all of your gear and everything like that. Your uniforms are super legit. Uh, everything's good. Uh, you got a standard success. That's all you needed. Okay. So. Uh, Pop us off on somebody else. <laughs> so, so this guy, um, I, I don't have a name for him. I didn't make up any names or anything. He's kind of a nobody. Um, but John he, Doe. John Doe. Okay. Or, or Don Joe, one of the two. Um, so he looks over at his, uh, compatriot and says, you got this. And the other guy who's got uh, kind of a little bit taller, brown hair. He hasn't had his, his, uh, haircut in the last couple of days. Um, just looks back and nods and he says please stay here a moment 
and, and this is while the uh, the blonde guy is going inside the door. He comes back out a couple of minutes later, and he says, uh, uh, our director of public relations is on his way to assist you. Please wait here a moment. He will be able to answer all of your questions about fire marshals and about uh, uh, codes and everything like that. Um, certainly, you'll you'll be inside and, and taking a look. We under they understand because this guy is an American, okay? And he says they understand that that uh, you know all of the laws and stuff make it necessary for inspectors to get in at random. So. Uh, he will help you in a moment. After about five minutes, a uh, guy comes out. Uh, he says, uh, uh, in, in, and he's got, he speaks plain English, but of course he's got that kind of forced accent. Okay, the, the, the forced Japanese accent. He, he says, my name is Konichi Ru. And I generally lead tour groups, but uh, this is a different thing altogether. Are you going to be chasing our people outside today? Well, yeah, that's part of the drill. We'll run a standard fire drill. Uh, when was the last time you had a fire drill? I smile at him in a kind of bored fashion. Uh, actually, this park is so new that we haven't had a, f a fire drill as yet. Well, uh, then. Everything is up to code. It's this building is um, a, about a year old, uh, and it only started, uh, you know, about seven months ago. It only opened about seven months ago, but we've been in it for eight. Yes, I are, according to our records, that it was built to code. So let's get testing and making sure everything was installed properly and is still working. Yes, please um, uh, follow me. Uh, I, I only ask that you uh, maintain yourselves away from secure areas and uh, ensure that you have uh, all of your equipment that you need so you're not running in and out all the time. Uh, our well, security requirements in this building are very, very strict since we work with the Centers for Disease Control. All right. Well, then, um, do you have a maintenance person or someone who can show us uh, what protocols you use for fire uh, protocols in your more secured areas? Yes, yes, we can do that. Um, uh, our uh, maintenance and security personnel are well trained in, uh, in, in, in all of those things so that they can take care of the building. And he says, please, excuse me for a moment. He holds up his hand and he says, please excuse me. And he walks over to the uh, counter and there is a young lady there, but she is a large young lady. Uh, she's probably five foot 11, five, uh, six foot even. Uh, and like the guards that are outside, she is dressed very similarly. And, uh, and she has a good build on her as well. Um, uh, she puts a smile on her face and she looks over at, at you guys and she waves her hand at, at, at uh, Kanichi. Uh, and and says, sure, I'll take care of this. She walks over. Um, my name is Melissa, and uh, uh, Director Rue has asked me to to uh, walk you around the building so that you can uh, check on various things. Well, and well, I don't want to waste any of your valuable time. So uh, I, I go through my spiel, which we've all probably practiced now. This is like our fourth building or our fifth building in, right? Mm -hmm. Fifth building in, the final building. <laughs> we can just pretend to go through the motions until we get to someplace interesting where Nightbird and Chris are going to uh, um, need us to be distracting. <laughs> okay. Need to split off or, or do their thing. Uh, meanwhile, I pause and actually press buttons on fire extinguishers. I wow. and, and catalog the uh, and, and have Rios should hopefully be studiously writing things down. Mm -hmm. Looking oh, like yes, she's of course. filling out the the, mm -hmm. the the proper forms. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on a second. Uh, Ross, what's up? Well, I was trying to hear her and let me say something. Sure. So, yeah, well, you're here now. Yeah. Um. I don't think we should try to do this while all the security is here and everything. <laughs> I uh, whisper like, back. I I I, I, I whisper. Like, like, <sighs> Okay, let, let me kind of point something out. Um, sometimes it's better to to be in plain sight. 
Um, a lot of people out there make the assumption that it's better if there's no, you know, quote unquote bad guys around or opposition or whatever. Um, but if you go in there plain and you've got all of, you know, all of your documents are in order and everything's in good shape, um, hell, the report that's being written could probably be turned in legitimately to, <laughs> to the fire department because of the cards that were played and, and the disguises that all of you have and <laughs> everything like that. So, and Ginger, I mean, Peaches is a firefighter. Yeah, an oh, actual yeah. firefighter. I mean, mm -hmm. all right, that's fine. Whatever. And, and, you, and that doesn't mean you can't excuse yourself to the restroom at any point. Or, you know... Uh, there are many, many creative ways to deal with this. So what we're going to do is I'm going to make sure that everybody around the table has the opportunity to to do things. Uh, there are certain things that I'm I'm actually going to request that are done. OK, um, so let me let me kind of get into this. I'm going to have this might take me a little bit to to get through because you guys have, of course, irrevocably changed my story. So but you know what? <laughs> I've been a GM for a long, long time, so here we go. Okay, the tour is a very matter-of-fact affair, with Melissa explaining the purpose of the facility is to work with the CDC to determine whether there have been any outbreaks of the Jiangxi virus or the potential of an outbreak uh, anywhere in the United States, or if there has, to provide assistance, as has been done in the Asia Theater, to prevent it from getting a strong foothold or to reverse any strains within the U.S. borders. Um, and this is while you guys are kind of going around. It's almost like she's giving a tour, but it's the it's the 50 cent tour instead of the five dollar tour like uh, Kunichi would give. Okay. Um, let's see. You get shown Even more brass tacks than is yeah. Than yes, is. exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, and I kind of wanted to go around with say like a maintenance worker because those people are always ignored and are everywhere. Well, um, but there's no. Uh, she explains when you ask about that she explains our maintenance workers generally don't come in until evening because then the the building is shut down uh if we have an emergency we can call one in at any given time but our security team has been briefed on all manner of medical and uh, mechanical uh issues that can crop up and we're we're very well trained in in doing that so the maintenance folks don't have to come in until night shift um, so let's see, you get shown around, uh, the various hallways to the boardroom, the corporate cubicle bullpen, and even the laboratories on the fourth floor, uh, that are t quote unquote testing strains of cold flu and other detected viral strains to determine if any of them may mutate into Zhangxi. Okay. Now let's get with what you guys want to do. Let's start on the first floor. Um, I'm, I'm going to go around the table and find out what any of you might be looking for. Now, obviously, Rios and Artorias, you can, I'm going to say that you can present ideas for things that you can look for, but your characters themselves are not going to be versed in the high tech of this building. Um, there are items in this building that even um, Peaches and Chris... Um, don't recognize, uh, Andon will not recognize them, but Nightbird will probably have a clue what they are. Now, for Nightbird, that means that they've got upgraded fire technology, um, that, uh, but the, they've got upgraded fire technology that, that you know is really good for suppressive. For instance, uh, 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 spray labor spray laser technology can be used to dissipate oxygen and put out fires that sort of thing um, but the question is this are you going to tell anyone while in the presence of Melissa no okay because then she would probably she might have an idea that uh, that you're not yeah an Asian American, okay. Well, I mean, I'm Asian, so well, I'm you're an Asian American. What? 
Well, that was part of my background, remember? Yeah, yeah. So the the big deal here is um, Melissa has made an assumption that based on the way that you're dressed, you're wearing an official firefighter uh, uniform and or kit, whatever. She just assumes that you are an Asian American. So, you know, if 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 you know regardless of what your past has been like or or what your your history is uh you know that's what's going on white american not asian american yeah but okay okay all right that's cool so we got that squared away um let's see so i'm gonna start at the top of the list and and work my way down chris what are you looking for Now going to the bathroom. Uh, he, he, he's going to the restroom. Start with Nightbird. Okay. Uh, well, no, I'll, I'll start with you, Peaches. <laughs> what are um, you unfor- looking for? Um, unfortunately, I am going to be actually going through the motions of a fire inspector. Okay, so you're so, you're just you're just trying to find anything that you know would be wrong or you know out of date or broken or anything like right. that. Okay. Like. Like if I see, say, an archaeology department, I would take note, um, because what we're looking for, you know, anything from the East India Trading Company, didn't they stamp everything with their, like logo? Um, uh, well, actually, remember, hmm? go ahead. <laughs> where aren't we hunting for uh, connections to the Stevensons or the Parkinsons or this archaeology <laughs> tablet thing or? Uh, the site in, where was it, Mumbai? Uh, no. It was in India, but not in Mumbai. India. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, uh, uh, anything uh, of an Indian or archaeological nature. Right. Um, I'm afraid the tech of, of anything else would probably be beyond me. Okay, all right. Well, no, most of the tech that's in the building fits Core Earth. Okay. Which, uh, which is something else, it would be something else that was, would be kind of an alarming thing to, uh, to Nightbird, actually, because how are they hosting this technology in a core earth building unless there's something else going on to support that technology? Make sense? Ooh. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. There's more here in me. Yeah, which is why I wanted to be in here in the first place. Yeah. Well, I don't know what uh, Kanawa or a uh, Pan Pacifica Stella would look like. It wouldn't be like the. Uh, Actually, it's like funny. You, you guys have not run across any Stella in the game at all up to we, this point. We did too. We did too. Uh, Where? We 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 learned we learn we learned from the Ukam what a uh, a, a living land still I looked like. You are absolutely correct. I for, I had forgotten about that. Yeah, but that's we actually got a lesson on what still I were. Yeah, and that it was dangerous for the ords to move them; they would die. And of course, you should have a connection in your journal entries um, uh, that allows you to open up that page. So that you can kind of look at it again. I, I left all those connections from previous adventures available for you guys. Um, uh, those of you who were there to experience it. For instance, the the Janus coin that Chris has. Uh, he's the only one that has access to that. Uh, to what that looks like. So, huh. yeah. But uh, anything oh. that you guys have encountered that, that was relevant to your character for that adventure... You have all of that stuff in your character's notes if you need it. Um, okay, good. But for Nightbird and for uh, who, who who hasn't played uh, Torg before, mm-hmm. uh, you you have will have learned by now that uh, the reality pirates create uh, these artifacts that advance their reality for forward and forward. Mm-hmm. Even as it eats up all of uh, the core Earth reality. Excellent. And uh, these things are called Dele, and that they are unique to each uh, world that that's invading. And um, 
but you might or might not know what a, a Pan Pacifica one looks like, but you probably wouldn't know what any of the others look like. But by now, almost everybody's aware of what these are. Maybe not what they look like, though. Storm Knights would be aware. Yeah. <laughs> well, Storm, Storm Knights would have some awareness, certainly. Um, yeah. And, of course, you know, you guys could share your data if you need to. Uh, I can make it available to pretty much anybody. Um, okay. So, moving forward. Um, let's see. Uh, Rios. What do you think? Uh, do you have any suggestions about what could be uh, looked for? Hmm. Well... Oh, that is a good question. All right, so we are allowed to suggest things that our characters would not know about, correct? Correct. You and uh, Remington can can each do that, uh, even though your characters are, are, are way out of their tech level. Gotcha. So I would look like for maybe some kind of like main CPU unit that we can stick a flash drive in and download some stuff from. Or even just look through it even you know like okay are we passing some manner of computer room that we can look into okay all right fair enough um yeah where, where nightbird could like casually lean against a cpu unit and shove a hard drive in there or a thumb drive, <laughs> thumb drive in, while we yammer and pretend to do right. inspections or something like that especially if we could find a server room Okay. Because there's got to be a lot of surge protectors and fire extinguishers and everything that in those because those are dangerous. They can overheat mm -hmm. and cause a fire. That's and absolutely right. electrical fires are bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So uh, let me just, before I get to Artorius about any suggestions he may have, um, let me just say because Ross himself is not going to know this about Pan Pacifica yet. Um, have you guys, okay, do you guys know the movie Black Rain? It had Michael Douglas in it. Um, and it, it yeah, I heard of it. Actually, I know of it, but I haven't actually watched that one. Yeah. Um, I know Matrix and lots of other Simon Punk and okay. movies. What about, uh, War with Jet Li and, um, anyway, um, war is is basically about um, a rogue agent uh, for the Chinese government who was working with an agent of the FBI uh, in Hong Kong, and they come to loggerheads because of something that takes place. Uh, IMDB war. Um, uh, Jason movie. Statham. It kind of, de uh, War and Black Rain kind of delve into the idea of how structured Japanese society is and, and well, China, Asian society in general uh, is and also about how paranoid uh, they can be about data and, and about, you know, how they maintain their family names and, and everything like that. The, the the general idea to give you here is that Pan Pacifica, a, a Kanawa building, is not likely to have a main server room on their lower floors. Okay, but we're going to do some dice rolls here in a minute to see if you do see anything else that might be helpful to you. Um, so, okay, Remington is, is away for the moment. Uh, oh no! I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> it's 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 Connor that's I, away for the moment. I'm back. I've been back for a little bit. Okay. Uh, well, I I just read your message. So, uh, so Artorius, do you have any ideas about what could be looked for? Now, you got you and Rios are not even going to be able to make rolls on this. Um, so it's going to fall to the other three. I mean, I'm the magic man here, man. When it comes to magic, I'm good, but tech, that's kind of out of my league, you know? Yeah, but what about you? <laughs> what about you yeah. personally? I mean, Asians use magic. Maybe okay. not 
maybe not paying specific specifically, but there's all kinds of magic and mythology in Asian lore. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm honestly not for sure, and I honestly have no idea. My idea was already taken, so okay, <laughs> I've got nothing else I can think of. Ooh 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 ooh. ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Should should we try and look for any secret rooms or secret passageways? Mm, you could, but uh, since the building was already up since you know before Kanawa moved in, um, before the Zhangxi virus became a thing, uh, most likely they haven't had time to do anything with that. So I, I'm 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 gonna say let's not we're we're it's a good idea, and in like an ancient um, haunted house that would be perfect, but this is a super high tech <laughs> facility so probably yeah, not. Yeah, and they didn't decide to like ha for whatever secret thing they're researching on they didn't put make a secret laboratory for it. I didn't say they didn't put a secret laboratory in here. So that's something that you guys could look for, but the idea that they're going to have a lot of, you know, one or more secret areas in the building is probably not too realistic at this point. So, Got it. Okay. Uh, Nightbird, any suggestions? Well, there's the, the server area or the backup server area, which is probably not on the first floor. Mm -hmm. Probably on an upper floor or a lower level under more security. Mm -hmm. um, are there any? So there's probably not any major labs on the first floor either. No. No. Yeah, the so, first floor is pretty much all uh, like boardrooms and conference rooms. Yeah, all administ administrative. Administrative. Exactly. Yeah. So. There's not going to be much of anything useful. Okay. Unless it's like a main office or something for like a, like, yeah. a, like a senior officer or something. So yeah. everything's going to be either upstairs or in a lower level. Okay. Is the senior security office uh, closet or uh, security office where they maintain all the videos of heeds and stuff. Is that on the ground floor? No. Okay. Okay. So, um, who wants to try and look for... Okay, let's see. We've got computer terminals. Who wants to look for a computer terminal that might be, uh, might be around, might be available? Well, I'm uh, actually looking for things like that so okay. that I can lean against them and point or point them out. Okay. <laughs> um, what? Okay. Let, let me let me run through these. We need um, computer terminal. We need uh, unsecure offices. Um, we need um, uh, potentially. Yes, I can spell that. Sec uh, secure secret areas um and i've got one more that i'm going to keep to myself okay so there are three items here that that would need to be looked for by those who have some kind of tech savvy so anyone who wants to pick one and roll a fine test let me know uh i could look for computers Okay, roll it. Can I assist? Well, no, I'm. I'm... Well, uh, you could assist him with that, but uh, that—that's pretty much the only thing that you would be looking for. Especially since, uh, as you explained it, you are taking—you um, uh, are acting like an inspector. Yeah, I'm taking a uh, point on the uh, faux inspection to actually go through the motions of doing an inspection to make it look so like I... a real inspection. Yeah, I can't be much help but i might be able to find unsecure offices like hey this is a fire door it should be secured when it's left open <laughs> you uh, don't prop open safety doors or whatever 
Uh, okay, is that the way you would want to? Is that how your um, your training would take over, or would you be able to kind of bypass that as a storm knight and just more or less leave it alone for the time being? Just oh, maybe make a note. Uh, I would definitely uh, leave it alone and unsecured. <laughs> okay. Because employees are their own worst enemies and, and this kind of thing. That's the and, truth. Uh, yeah. And uh, I would maybe make a note of it on my uh, uh, notepad, not uh, in some kind of shorthand for myself. I'm not going to, like, say, uh, you know, make anything abundantly clear on any mm -hmm. of my notes. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. I gotcha. Okay. So, uh, Chris, uh, go ahead and give me a roll for computer terminal. Just what, standard. What's the difficulty? The standard difficulty. Ten. Okay. You're, what you're, uh, unless you're actually trying to concentrate on it, um, most of the rolls that you guys are going to be making are going to be kind of a passive thing. So, okay. So, yeah, you don't spot anything Ooh. on the first floor. Um, peaches? Ah, I was one short. Yep. Did you want to try and throw anything at it? Uh, I don't have a supporter or anything. <laughs> uh, I have a backup plan just in case for later. Okay. Oh, oh, how many floors to go? Three more. You're on the first floor. You've got three to do. And this one isn't the most secure floor anyway. So if we wanted the good stuff, it's probably up high. Mm -hmm. So okay. I would save it, Connor. Ginger? Uh, that's why I said I have a backup plan if, yeah. all, if all else fails. Right. Okay, Peaches, roll for viewing unsecure any unsecure offices. <sighs> and this is just a simple find? Yes. That's pretty good. Um, it's a standard success. Uh, like you said, em uh, employees are their own worst enemies. Um, uh, even though they have ethics training and they have all kinds of computer training every year, you know, make sure that you secure stuff in a locked drawer or in a cabinet. Uh, make sure that you, you know, nothing is is in in view of anybody who could potentially get away from it. They still end up doing it every year. Okay, um, so you spot uh, probably two, there's probably 15 doors on the bottom floor, maybe 20 um, that are open uh, or that are available, but there's only two or three that are, are actually uh, uh, left open, uh, unsecure. Okay, um, from the, the three that you see, we'll say it's three, two of them uh, seem to be more or less like copy rooms than anything else um, mm -hmm. there are windows in the building but they're they are very opaque from the outside so you really can't see inside from there but you can look outside and see a dim view of the rest of the quad um, so uh, that's pretty much what you find three open doors two of them look like actually there you go one of them looks like a, a break room one of them a copy center Okay, uh, the other one looks like it's someone's office, uh, and of course they do have a computer terminal in there, but the office is not decorated. Okay, it's utilitarian. It, yeah, you could easily say that. Okay, um, Nightbird, um, do you want to take a stab at the potentially secure and secret areas? <laughs> Yeah, my find's not really great, so we'll see. Yeah, uh, for the potentially secure and secret areas, that's a little bit more difficult. Uh, that's yeah, going to have course. a difficulty number of 12. All right. Um, don't I have a uh, fire map of the building? Sure. Do have... Okay. Um, firemen know, learn to count their steps. Uh-huh. So... Um, so that they can find their way if say things are smoky and go to hell. Um yeah. I I am well, as a matter of training. Let me deal with Ross. My step. Okay, counting your steps. That's awesome. That's that's a great idea and you can mark those down. 
uh, or you can kind of put little numbers here and there, whatever coding you want to do. Um, Nightbird, you're looking about and you don't find anything, but you've got the feeling that you wouldn't on this floor. Um, mm -hmm. that there's not really anything to see. There is no secure, uh, or I'm sorry, there is no server room on this floor. There, yeah, that's what I was suspecting. Yeah. Uh, that. Right. You suspect that there might actually be more dumb terminals on this floor disconnected than there are uh, uh, potentially on upper floors. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Depends on how how they're hidden, because if they're well, behind mm -hmm. if there's like a secret door that leads into another room, you wouldn't necessarily be able to... That room is not necessarily bigger by any means. But what Ginger said just a moment ago, and, and I, Ginger, I could hear you through my headphones when I was over at the other door about 10 feet away, and you're absolutely mm -hmm. right that you can count steps and get dimensions. Yeah. Uh, um, and, and the thing is, if I count my steps inside the building and then I kind of measure the outside of the building, um, I could find out if there were any floors that were shortchanged. But I want you to keep in mind, there could be rooms behind rooms. Yes. That's what I was trying to say. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, mm -hmm. you know, people, and then people have done that in real life. Oh, yeah. Especially serial killer type people. <laughs> hidden, hidden, hidden rooms within their house that you wouldn't have found necessarily. So, following protocol, and, and Melissa has some idea about how the protocols of the fire department work and everything like that. Uh, it's part of their security training. That way they can coordinate with the fire department really well. Uh, she easily takes you up in an elevator to, um, to, to get you to the second floor. I need all of you... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. Not... Uh, not Artorius and Rios. You you wouldn't really. This would probably be your first time in an elevator. So, um, but for the oh, rest, it's, of, <laughs> what is this? What is this? it's a like? it's a closed box and it feels like it's moving. What? Um, I don't like us. I don't like us. And, and of course, as an elf, you wouldn't like it. It would be terrible for you. Um, it's a beautiful box. <laughs> just grab just grab my stuff and stay quiet. <laughs> Can I stay undercover? Yep. Uh, <laughs> Does Rio or or Penny need to take your hand, hold your hand? <laughs> please, yes, please. All right. Okay, so the um, uh, so Chris, Peaches, and Nightbird, please give me. The better of evidence analysis or find. Whichever if, skill we have better. Y yeah, whichever skill is better for you. Um, <laughs> uh -huh. I only have one. So. Okay. Well, then that's your better for certain. Would you like me to roll? Just okay. a uh, yeah, it's just going to be a standard target number. Ooh. 13 on that for Peaches. Okay, so standard success for both Peaches and Chris. And, uh... There you go. Ten. And one, okay, so eleven for you. So, I... Ross, I'm telling you, I don't know why the dice don't like you. Um, I hate this game. Eh. Don't hate the game, hate the dice. Um, no. Anyway... Um, so, Peaches and Chris, you notice that the, the, the button board for the, it has all of the standard stuff, um, but you notice that there is also a, 
a, a biometric pad beneath the uh, the floors, the, the floor buttons that you can push. Mm. Okay, so you get that. Well, that's a way to get to a secret place if I ever did see one. <laughs> I wonder Sub if there's level a... level three, anybody? Yeah, <laughs> level 30, anybody? Uh, I don't know about level 30. Um... Uh, anyway, you know that there are four floors in the building. Um, when the door opens, Melissa looks back and gives all of you a smile and says, are you getting some good data so far? She asks. Oh, everything, uh, seems, everything seems really good. Uh, thank you. Let, let's let's move on. Okay. And I say, what, where is the, you know, who's the fire marshal? How many employees? What's your, where are your fire escape uh maps posted you know and i i take her by the elbow and you know make sure she's paying attention to me mm -hmm. well for the while everybody else can pretend to inspect okay well for the the first and second floors um uh, uh she she's able to kind of walk you around um there are people um that have been appointed but she she verifies that except for security personnel they're not trained yet uh, because the you know things are so new in this corporate atmosphere, and you know it, it takes forever to get training done, and nobody ever wants to do the training or put it together or whatever. Anyway, she kind of jokes about that a little bit. She says we're we're working on getting the training done, but we're not there yet. I roll my eyes and go, I know, right? Mm -hmm. I sympathize with. Her. And she she just kind of smiles at you, giggles a little bit with you, and and then relaxes. Uh, a little bit more and uh, uh, so okay here we are again uh, oh that's what I wanted to do I'm gonna do this differently this time all five of you can make a standard find test actually Nightbird you get to make an easier test so you get to roll against an 8 the rest of you against a 10 please mm -hmm. uh, and it's a find test Okay. That'd be mine, right? Yes, find oh, would be mine. Okay. Wow. Holy smokes. Got some oh. good dice rolls coming on here. Okay. <laughs> Boom, <Berlin. laughs> yeah, we got everyone. <laughs> Berlin. Berlin. Oh, oh, no. no. <laughs> okay, okay, everybody stop rolling. I got it. Okay. So let's see. Chris Peaches. Um, uh, but he got the right, okay, there's not going to be a disconnect in this for Rios, uh, cause it's just looking around with your Mark one eyeballs. Nightbird, I think Nightbird rolled the highest, even though her, her test was easier. She rolled the highest. Oh, he no, did. Chris. Okay. Yeah. So Chris and Nightbird at about the same moment locate a um, an access card that is loose. Nobody seems to be around for it or anything like that. Now, I've got to make a, a, a die roll also. So let me go ahead and make that real quick. <laughs> Melissa doesn't notice it. Do either of you want to grab it? I'll grab it. Okay. It. Okay. Um, give me... You know what? Give me a stealth test. Stealth is supposed to take care of all of your your um, what is that? Your covert stuff. All right. Okay. Outstand uh, your difficulty. Uh, you know what? Let's make it a twelve. Ooh! Ooh! Ooh. Oh! Oh! They rolled over from a twenty. Okay. Uh, that's a good success. You managed to nab the card. And you can slide that easily into a pocket. Now, what level of security that card has, you're not sure. I didn't get a good, good enough look at it. Okay, it, well, um, you saw that it had a purple stripe on it. Um, uh, in fact, you and, and, and Nightbird both saw that it has a purple stripe on it. Uh, you're not sure what that could possibly mean. Um, and, well, what's the name on the card, or did I not catch it? Uh, you, 
how fast did you want to slip it into a pocket? Well, I, I mean, I would be like looking at it, look to see if Melissa sees it, and then well, looking and yeah. looking back to grab it. Okay. Actually, yeah. you probably don't want to be that obvious because we are probably uh, being watched by security. So uh -huh. you're you're just stroll through as it casually falls into your pocket is probably the best strategy you could take right now and okay. look at it later. Okay, Nightbird, what do you have in mind? That's true, but what do you have in mind? Well, well that's what I was going to suggest as well, that you just acquire it and not... Not study it yet? It. Okay. And uh, I wanted to see if I saw any of these color codes anywhere. Aha! To see if I can figure out what they mean. Okay. Yep. Like on the doors or in secure areas or what have you. Okay, give what me a... Hold Melissa's. on. Uh, that's, that's a good question. So, both of you, since you've asked those questions, uh, Nightbird, I want you to give me a, a find test to see if you've seen any kind of a color coding system. Uh, Peaches, give me a fine test to see if, if you can remember what Melissa's badge, what stripe Melissa's badge has. And uh, this is a standard? Standard, just standard test for both of you. Okay. 17 is nice. Okay. Uh, uh, do you want to throw anything at that? Like a possibility me? or a card? Me? Yes, you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to throw a possibility in it. Okay, so uh, let's see. You want me to reduce that, or do you want to? Uh, you can. Because you've got five of them. Now you've got yep. four. Go ahead and, and hit the possibility on the chat card. Okay, That now remember, when you throw a possibility at it, it gives you a minimum of ten. So uh, your original skill value was a nine. Uh, your current bonus is a plus two because of what you did. Your action total is 11 versus a 10 standard. Okay. Now, um, since, uh, since Ross suggested looking for color coding first, I'm going to handle him first. Give me just a minute, Peaches. I'll be right there. Um, you have found that... The color coding seems to be kind of a descending order. Um, so the, um, the, the lighter the color, uh, it appears the higher the access. So a purple stripe card may not be the greatest access, but you've also noticed that the type of access Okay, whether it's, you know, like security or, or maintenance or laboratories or whatever takes, uh, takes precedence there. So the darker it is does not necessarily point you in the right direction. But let's say purple was maintenance, and I'm not saying it is. I'm just giving an example. Let's say a dark purple like the one uh, Chris picked up. Is, is maintenance, a lighter purple would be a higher level of access. Oh, okay. So, and okay. we picked up a dark purple or purple you, or light purple. You've got a, you've got a dark purple. It, it, it's kind of a medium dark purple. Um, so unless you find a really nice chart that explains everything, you're not entirely certain uh, how good that card could be. Uh, now, Peaches. Um, uh, Melissa's card is kind of a medium red. Uh, it's it's not quite pink. Um, it's darker. It, yeah, it's darker than pink. Now, is it magenta or? Uh, it, or it, the one that you picked up. It, no, it's just is hers a light red or a, a like I said, it's it's red? it's a little bit darker than pink, so it's it's a it 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 kind of hits the same spectrum as pink, but it's it's actually in the red category. I I know what I'm trying to describe, and I know I'm failing miserably, but um, uh, as for the card that Chris picked up. Uh, you were asking if it's kind of a... Uh, no, wait a minute. You were asking about Ginger's card, Magenta. 
Um, it's darker than that. It's a darker, darker red than that, but not by much. I'm, I'm hoping I'm making sense here. 